well my dear students we are now going to speak on a very important issue for all kind of metal forming processes uh, a topic which is has been of very interest has been very uh, important for all kind of metal forming the friction and lubrication in metal forming so we will speak on this topic today as you know the friction uh, in all metal forming processes as far as the friction is concerned higher the friction the greater the load requirement to produce a particular deformation right so more it is the friction more the requirement of load whether it is a cold forming process or hot forming processes and uh, consequently much attention has been given to the problems of producing low values of coefficient of friction this is not however usually the major consideration in choosing a metal working lubricant or elimination of the uh, the possibility of damage which is caused by metal transference uh, uh, from the workplace to the tools is more important right so the tool life can be prolonged both by reducing friction and by preventing metallic contacts with the workpiece you know all of you about this however if the lubricant film is too thick a matte surface may result you know to and therefore to reduce a bright surface it may be necessary to sacrifice some lubricant uh, lubrication efficiency some operations even uh, require a uh, large uh, minimum friction like in rolling of flat strip the rolls will skid if the friction is too low and it is therefore necessary to use a necessary uh, relatively poor lubricant to obtain the greatest possible reduction in area per pass okay apart from uh, increasing external forces the frictional stress has an important very important issue on metal flow and uh, this may cause serious inhomogeneity in work product as well as surface crack and other defects therefore lubrication is an important aspect of metal working and several factors need to be considered here if you recall the friction contributes about 10% of the load for an average heavy reduction of area that is around 40% with a good lubricant having uh, 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 giving around 5% uh, 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 there is around 20% contribution if the lubricant is uh, of the friction between 0 and 1 uh, 0.1 right therefore the frictional contribution is balanced against the increase in force due to redundant work to find the optimal diagonal uh, which is uh, dependent upon the coefficient of friction directly if you recall the friction hill uh, in rolling the peak pressure if you recall the peak pressure may be considerably increased by friction and 
increases in roll load by around 10 to 10 to 20 percent. All right. So uh, uh, and it may be found even in cold rolling uh, uh, where the friction is usually low. Okay. Uh, in hot rolling, the friction uh, in fact is much higher and the roll load uh, are further increased therefore. But the effect on peak pressure is uh, not so great as simple in theory would predict theoretically, right? Because, uh, because of the limitation of sticking friction condition. In cold forging, load increases around 30 percent are found uh, under common operating conditions, right. So, we have to look for the lubricants and related chemicals uh, such that it is safe for the production that is means process, forming process. It is safe for the products as well and it is environmentally friendly and therefore, you are able to produce environmentally friendly products. So, a lubricant that is mean for reducing the friction, uh, it is also called sometimes as lube, is a substance, most often it is a kind of liquid. Uh, the introduce between the two moving surface to reduce the friction between them, right. And uh, therefore, improving efficiency and reducing the wear. So, have the function of uh, dissolving foreign particles as well, if it is. So, petroleum based lubricants like uh, Vaseline tend to dissolve petroleum products such as rubber and plastic, water based lubricants will dissolve uh, polar chemicals, silicon based lubricants can break down silicon toys etcetera, right. So, this is. Uh, in fact, the lubricants even protects the, the internal combustion engine in uh, motor vehicles and powered uh, equipment you know all of. And this contains around 90, 90 percent of the base oil, uh, uh, most often it is a pro, uh, petroleum uh, fractions which is called as the mineral oils and uh, less than around 10 percent additives. Vegetable oil or synthetic liquids such as uh, hydrogenated uh, polyphenes, esters, uh, silicon uh, and uh, fluorocarbons and many others are also used sometimes as a base oil, you know. Uh, in fact, lubricants are uh, comprised of a base oil or base fluid usually of petroleum origin and uh, combined with some added chemicals that enhance the performance of the lubrication. And uh, base fluids are uh, uh, collected from two main sources mainly the refined crude oil or a mixture of chemical compounds that perform the same task as the lubricant. That means, the purpose are the function of a lubricant is to keep the moving uh, parts apart with reduced friction and to transfer heat that is to carry away the containments and debris uh, and to transfer power and to protect against the wear prevention, corrosion, seal uh, for gases is stopped. Uh, the risk of smokes and fire of the objects in general. But as far as the forming operation is concerned, that the purpose is to keep the, the these surfaces, uh, the basically the die surfaces uh, very smooth, so that the flow of the metal during the forming process is easier. And also, uh, it requires therefore, less friction and therefore, less power as well. So, as uh, if you see the moving parts 
are concerned that the lubricants has a different purpose which is uh, basically used for uh, separating the moving parts in a system and uh, this has the benefit to reduce the friction and surface fatigue together with reduced heat generation and uh, operating noise as well and vibrations as well. Lubricants achieve uh, this by several ways in fact the most common is by forming a physical barrier that is a thin layer of lubricant that separates the moving part or here also that separates the uh, if there is any debris. In fact, that is basically called as the hydrodynamic lubrication and uh, in case of high surface pressures uh, or uh, temperature the fluid film is much thinner and some of the forces are transmitted between the surface through the lubricant and that case it is called as the electrohydrodynamic lubrication. So, these are different issues we are not going to discuss much on this, but uh, as far as reduction of uh, friction is concerned is much less than surface to surface friction in system without lubrication. Thus use of a lubricant reduces the overall system friction, it reduces friction therefore has the benefit of reducing heat generation and reduce and proper filling of the metal into the cavities while uh, say the forging closed die forging and all those operations and even in seat forming operations. Uh, in fact, the lubricants may contain additives which I said known as the friction modifiers that chemically bind to metal surface to reduce the surface friction even then there is a insufficient bulk lubrication present for hydrodynamic lubrication process and that is protecting the wall and uh, other things if you look into the uh, the wall train in car engine and all that. Uh, as far as the transfer of the heat both in case of gas and liquid the lubricants can transfer heat as well. However, the liquid lubricants are much more efficient on account of uh, their high specific heat capacity. Uh, this circulating flow also determines the amount of heat that is carried away in any given unit of the time. So, uh, as far as the transfer of power is concerned, you know the Pascal law is the heart of the hydrostatic power transmission, where the um, hydraulic fluid comprise a large portion of the, the all lubricants uh, produced in the world. Uh, the protect uh, which that protects against wear and lubrication and prevents the wear by keeping. In fact, three things comes into picture tribology, we say as a tribology that is the lubrication, friction, lubrication and wear all these things are. So, if you reduce friction with the help of lubrication you have reduced wear of the dyes and all, all things and uh, and that's we call is the lubricants may also contain anti wear or extreme pressure additives to boost their performance against wear and fatigue as well as say when you force very uh, continuously in automated manner so we come across the fatigue as well so and uh, this also lead prevents corrosion, uh, good quality lubricants are typically formulated with additives that form chemical bonds with surface to prevent corrosion and rust as well as right. So, seal for the gases uh, lubricants will occur say in hot forming the gases sometimes also evolves. So, you require the seal for the gases lubricants will uh, occupy the clearance between the moving parts that is where the when it is uh, the metal is being flown uh, through a capillary force and that uh, thus sealing the clearances. This effect can be used to seal uh, the boundaries uh, for the form. 
usually we come across uh, different types of lubricants we come across uh, liquid lubricants that includes emulsion and uh, suspension we include solid lubricant we include greases and we include adhesives the liquid lubricants like uh, lanolin right that is a wool grease or natural water repellent uh, and then uh, water mineral oil vegetables like the natural oil synthetic oils uh, and others uh, are also there although generally lubricants are based on the type of base oil as i said or another it is quite possible to use mixture of the base oil to meet the performance requirement of lubricants uh, if you see linolin right a, which is a natural water repellent linolin is derived from uh, sea wool grease and uh, it is an alternative to the more common petrochemical based lubricants these lubricants are also corrosion inhibitors protecting against rust salt and acids water water can be also used on its own or as a major component in com uh, combination with one of the other base alloys commonly used in engineering uh, processes such as uh, milling and lathe turning also it is used right so the mineral oil is another category uh, which is uh, the term used uh, to encompass uh, the lubricating base oil derived from crude oil uh, the american petroleum institute api if you look at they designate several types of lubricants uh, base oil identity and uh, that is grouped into group 1 that contain saturates having 0.03% and uh, society of automotive engineers that is sae uh, uh, they say the viscosity index which is uh, either equal to or greater than 82 or it is less than 120 and uh, it is manufactured by solvent extraction solvent or catalytic de waxing process and hydro finishing processes in fact this group 1 uh, lubricant has a base oil uh, are around 150 SN that is the solvent natural solvent 500 SN and 150 uh, BS that is uh, bright stock there is another cat group we say the group 2 where the saturates is more than 90 percent and uh, sulfur is around 80 uh, to less than 120 and uh, this is manufactured by hydro cracking and uh, solvent or catalytic de-waxing processes group 2 uh, lubricant uh, that is used the base oil has uh, superior antioxidation properties since virtually all uh, hydrocarbon molecules are saturated it has water uh, white color in fact and uh, likewise the group 3 where you have the saturates more than 90 percent and sulfur has 120 and manufactured by special uh, processes such as uh, isohydromerization and uh, it can be manufactured from base oil or uh, slacks wax from de-waxing process and uh, whereas there is another group we call is a group 4 where you have poly uh, alpha uh, alpha fins that is we call it as a PAO and group 5 uh, that uh, all other which is not specified above such as uh, naphthalenes uh, PAG esters and etc in, in fact in North America group 3, 4 and 5 are now described as synthetic lubricants and uh, with group 3 which is frequently described as synthesized hydrocarbons or SHCs <coughs> all right so and uh, in Europe only group uh, 
uh, four and five may be class uh, classified as synthetics. The lubricant industry commonly extends this group uh, technology to include, and one should know in even informing people that these groups are very important. Uh, if you look at the group one plus with the viscosity uh, index that is 103 to 108, the group two which has viscosity index around 113 to 1019, group three has viscosity index as uh, more than 140 and uh, therefore can be classified into three categories depending on the prevailing compositions like uh, it is whether it is a paraffin class, whether it is a naphthalene, naphthalene nick class or aromatic class. Vegetable oils which is natural, there are primarily uh, triglycerides esters which is derived from plants and animals. For lubricant base oil uh, used to, it is used to uh, for the vegetable derived materials uh, and it is generally preferred. Common one that includes high uh, oilic uh, canola oil, castor oil, palm oil, sunflower seeds oil and uh, repeas oil from vegetables and uh, tall oil from animal sources. Many vegetable oils are often hydro layered to yield the acids which are subsequently combined selectively to form specialized synthetic esters. Synthetic oils like uh, poly, uh, 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 olefin, uh, synthetic esters, uh, polyalkaline glycols, uh, phosphate esters, alkylated uh, naphthalenes, silicon esters, uh, ionic fluids, etc. And uh, as far as in forming, which is very common, it is a solid lubricant. So, we have uh, the solid lubricant like Teflon and uh, R, which is also called as PTFE. Teflon R PTFE is usually uh, is a typically used as a coating layer on, for an example, cooking utensils, you know to provide a non-stick surface, a black one. So, mineral graphites, uh, hexagonal boron nitride, uh, molybdenum disulfide and tungsten uh, disulfide are examples of materials that can be used as solid lubricants often uh, to very high temperature. The use of such materials are still uh, restricted by their poor resistance to oxidation that is molybdenum uh, disulfide can only be used to uh, up to around uh, 350 uh, degrees, uh, 35 degree centigrade in air, but it can be used as 1100 degree centigrade in reduced environment. As far as the mineral graphites, uh, hexagonal boron nitride and uh, molybdenum disulfide are some of the examples of uh, materials that can be used as solid lubricant often to very high temperature like in forging, uh, close dye forging and all that. The use of such material is still restricted however by their poor resistance to oxidation. For an example, molybdenum disulfide can uh, only be used up to 350 degree centigrade in air. But it can be used up to 1100 degrees centigrade in reduced environment. Additives where a large number of additives are used to impart a performance characteristic to the lubricants. The main families of additives are uh, antioxidants, detergents, anti wear, metal deactivators, corrosion inhibitors, rust inhibitors, friction modifiers extreme pressure anti forming agents and uh, viscosity uh, index improvers, demulsifying, emulsifying. So, many things are concerned uh, with like when we talk of the seed forming lubricants, uh, the wire drying lubricants, 
so it also depends on the application methods like uh, spraying dipping brushing the way you apply it and dispersion of the solid lubricant as an additive in oil water or grease is most commonly used okay. so for parts that are inaccessible for uh, lubrication after assembly uh, a dry film lubrication can also be sprayed so these are some of the issues uh, which uh, concerns with most of the um, cases like molybdenum sulfide uh, and for for high temperature which is above 500 degrees centigrade uh, where the basic metal powders to protect the metal parts from oxidation becomes necessary to facilitate the the other issues that we will see if you look at uh, the different uh, issues um, as far uh, environment is concerned these lubrication because uh, the farming industry is a very wide industry huge industry so nowadays the environmental safety is also very much concerned so all kind of lubrication that we are going to use it must have a uh some environmental safety issues like the smoke it should not be very smoky uh, the there should not be formation of oil mist there should not be formation of acid mist while applying or during the forming uh, it should not also produce any alkaline mist and uh, there should not be any volatile uh, organic substances which is going to be formed while the operation and uh, alkanity fluid acidity should also not be there uh, irritant effects and uh, harmful or strong and chronic toxic effects should also be avoided uh, so these issues uh, are also very important and uh, as far as the cost is concerned of the lubrication if one can evaluate uh, these costs like uh, if you look at this chart this shows the cost and that has got uh, based on the technology you are using whether you are using a traditional technology whether you are using some technological we call later that it's a green chemistry so if you use the green chemistry the cost goes higher so this table gives it the product cost working cost wastage cost and environmental risk cost so if it is added you can see the the product uh, the two conditions when it is a traditional method and another when you use a better quality lubricants that we say it is a green green chemistry lubricants so you can see here so the product cost has the working cost is more above that the wastage cost is more and then the environmental cost is much uh, reduced as compared to the traditional one if you see the free powders are also used as dry powder uh, that is tumbling uh, uh, an effective application method like the uh, usually uh, there is a class of composites also where we say as the self lubricating composites so where we have the solid lubricants like ptfe graphites molybdenum sulfide and other anti friction and anti wear additives Uh, are often compounded in polymers and all kind uh, of uh, sintered material so molybdenum sulfide for example is an compounded uh, in materials for sleeve bearing elastomer o ring carbon brushes etc right solid lubricants are compounded in plastic to form a self lubricating or internally lubricated thermoplastic composites right so ptfe 
particles for example compounded in a plastic uh, form a ptfe film over the mating surface resulting in a, a reduction of friction and wear right so molybdenum sulfide is compounded in nylon as well as for reduced wear the friction and uh, is sticky uh, slipping further it acts as a nucleating agent uh, effecting in a very fine crystalline structure the primary use of graphite lubricated thermoplastic is and uh, is in application operating in aqueous environment actually that is not in our core concern so uh, as far as the lubrication basically uh, rolling also uh, heavy rolling uh, hot rolling it does not require much of lubrication but the application of the these lubricants concerns into your uh, sometimes your glass lubricant as well as in hot extrusion you have uh, 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 forging very often it is used you have wire drying solid lubricants are used and uh, then we come across uh, your uh, other non conventional uh, forging processes sheet metal forming also has got a lot of application uh, of the different lubricants that we have discussed so the purpose of lubricant basically is to reduce the friction and to help the filling of the material in very complicated cavities of the closed eye forging or others and then to reduce the wear as well so the die life also increases number of products can be produced more quality surface finish is also better so this is uh, a little bit about the related lubricant wear issues the the type of wear the uh, the type of uh, alloy that we are dealing and depending on the type of lubrication is another issues so whenever we discuss the different uh, individual chapters we will discuss specifically for different alloys what are the lubricant we use in industry so the but the basic fundamental we have discussed here as a general for all metal forming processes okay so uh, i thank you all for keeping patience and uh, hopefully uh, you can give your comments in the form of your feedback so that we can add more for your benefit so thank you thank you once again thank you very much